morning and welcome to your Friday segment of Good Morning KU. I'm Jay Daniels. And I'm Carlo. Welcome back. Um, it's the day after Halloween. It's a little it's a little empty on KU this morning. People are probably getting, you know, over the little Halloween candy hangovers. Yeah, I know. A lot of probably went to party yesterday. I know like international students they have the party in Chateau. They get mm -hmm. the entire chateau and they're there like uh, having a good time. Definitely. Well, I know a lot of people didn't make it to their 8 AMs. There were there weren't a lot of people in mind, but um, it was it's, it should be good. And we're definitely going to be celebrating it throughout the weekend. So it'll be a busy busy weekend for Lawrence for sure. Yeah, my professor even canceled the cl my communication class this afternoon well, because see. she knows that a lot of people probably won't come to class today. Yeah, professors need a break from Halloween too. But um, um, there's actually a great little event last night um, for Halloween for the little ones downtown. Um, there were. I don't know, Mass Street was sprawling with kids um, in their costumes. It was from 5 to 7, they got to go trick or treat. Um, the Mass Street shop owners um, were giving out candy to the little ones. There they go right there in their cute costumes. I've never seen Mass Street so busy. Yeah, and I believe all those kids are they're definitely getting very happy because they got so many candies and in different flavors, mm -hmm. sneakers, M&M. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was trying to drive down there around 5.30 and I could barely, there was so much traffic there. I've never seen it so busy, um, like I said earlier, but it was nice for the kids to be able to go out there, um, trick or treat, show their costumes off before, you know, downtown got full of college students uh, for the night festivities. So that was really sweet of that, but um, definitely, a great thing for that, and we'll see more things about Halloween next week. Yeah. Um, but men's basketball season and women's basketball season has started up at KU. There's a different atmosphere coming on the college campus. Yeah, the, the basketball field was actually packed. Uh, everybody was like uh, cheering for the team, support the team. Always, always. Yeah, we actually um, had a game Tuesday, a men's game against Pitt State, which we did. Oh, Fabulous! It was 97-57, yeah, I believe. A winning. great game, great opening game. We have uh, women's. They did good as well on Wednesday. They beat Pitt State 85 to 54, I believe. Um, just two great games. Um, phenomenal start for both of the teams. We have to definitely keep the momentum up for the rest of the season. Yeah, and we got a game this Sunday as well, right? Yes, we have another women's game Sunday against Emporia State. Um, that's starting at 2 p.m. And then we're going to have another men's game Tuesday um, around. Uh, 7 p.m. I believe and they are going to be against Fort Hayes State. Yeah so definitely you should go to support your team and if you can't get the tickets you should go to Buffalo Wild Wing um, at least uh, watch the game from the big screen. Definitely there's uh, so many restaurants in Lawrence that um, uh, there's so many restaurants in Lawrence that you can go catch the game on so if you if you didn't get that lottery ticket if you couldn't you know get a ticket into Allen Fieldhouse you definitely can go and get the atmosphere somewhere else. Um, but don't forget that it's also football season still, and um, our football team will be in Austin this weekend. So definitely support our basketball team and our football team. And our football team, yes. Um, kickoff is at 2.30 p.m., I believe, in Austin, Texas, against the Texas Longhorns. Um, so that should be a good game. Definitely support your teammates. <laughs> your team, not your teammates. Definitely support them um, by going and watching and sending your good vibes their way. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and after that, we'll be back with a package from Coral Lou. Welcome back. So as the uh, Chinese population is growing in Lawrence, the, ch uh, the number of Chinese restaurants is also growing. And we have uh, different kinds of Chinese restaurants, such as uh, buffet or all those um, authentic Chinese food. 
Definitely. Um, I'm definitely seeing an increase in Chinese um, buffets, uh, takeout menus um, in Lawrence. So is that, you think that's a direct result of the increase in population here? Yeah, and they even have the two types of different menus uh, written in different languages. They have the American, like the English menu, but mostly it serves the Americanized Chinese food, like crab rangoon. But they also have the, chi the real Chinese like the real Chinese food menu, so all the well, people, authentic. yeah, they can just order from there. Awesome. Okay, well, Corlu actually did a package about this, so let's take a look. As the KU Chinese students' population is growing, the number of Chinese restaurants in Lawrence is also increasing recently. Egg Fu Yang, Crab Rangoon, Egg Roast, the time of Americanized Chinese food is over now. Chinese customers are getting pickier about the authentic Chinese food, and this makes the local business become even more competitive. Most local Chinese restaurants start to have menus in different languages to satisfy both Chinese and American customers. Some restaurants always have special Chinese menu written in Chinese, such as red pepper. In eight flavors, it even has a scrolling sign outside to notify people what are the special and popular dishes here. In Oriental Chinese restaurant, it serves new specialties every day to keep their Chinese customers returning. Sanbeiji, three flavored chicken. Mala nyo rou tang, hot and spicy beef soup. Haixian tofu bao, seafood tofu pot. All those traditional Chinese cuisines take a lot more effort and time to cook, but Oriento marks them in a lower price. Our major customer is most of the Chinese customer. We also have half of the amount of the American customer too. We are uh, doing our own job and our own menu, so no one can copy from us. Once a Chinese restaurant catches a Chinese student's taste, the student will always come back and become a loyal fan of that restaurant. It's really close to my home and it's really convenient to drive here. And also I think the food is really delicious and uh, the most important is the price is far enough. A restaurant location, environment, setting and the food quality are really important. But the price makes a huge difference when all those factors are very similar. Based on the current business challenge, making customers continue to eat in a certain restaurant and providing cheaper price helps this restaurant's business in the long term. Korolu, Kansas Media. Good morning, KU. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Amanda Gaius. Here I have with is a student here at the University of Kansas studying journal journalism. Um, he's on the strategic communications track. He's also the founder of Next Generation. Thanks for coming here today. Thanks for having me, Amanda. You're welcome. Now, what is Next Generation? Well, the Next Generation program is the first ever student development leadership program for the journalism school. Um, the way it works is students from all classes, freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors, are all paired on teams. Uh, they are then also paired with faculty members and alumni advisors. So with those alumni and faculty advisors, student groups, um, work with each other to select an organization that they would like to benefit um, for an entire academic semester. So the organization provides funding for the students. The students um, give their time. So all the organization is providing is money for the campaign or whatever project that the students come up with. Um, and so it gives the students an opportunity to uh, really show what they know and um, do some real world, real world work. So. So how does it benefit students in the long run? So if you are a freshman coming into the Next Generation program, um, once you get in, you are in for the rest of your college career in the journalism school. So what that means is if as a freshman, um, if you become, once you become a senior, you've had four senior capstone projects that you have done um, on top of your required senior capstone. So you, you have five senior worthy level projects that you have worked on um, throughout this, um, throughout your years at KU. And so that is some amazing portfolio and real world experience. And on top of that, you have alumni connections because we have rotating alumni for the program. So you get a different set of alumni each year. And you've worked with students who have already graduated who are up to three years out in the workforce. So you have a lot of opportunities for connections. And also you've worked with um, probably four to five, maybe six different organizations during your time here. Okay, all right. Now I know there's a selection process that um, in order for students to get in. So how does the selection process work? 
Well, the selection process, uh, it's an online-based application. Um, we sent out an application back in late September, um, and they were, they were due maybe two or three weeks later. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was an easy application this, this year because it's a pilot program year. We want to make sure that we get enough students to make this program work. Um, but we see that the application process is going to get a whole lot more difficult as the years go forward um, because we really want this program to become a prestigious program that um, it only draws the best students. And we want to say this program has the best students and we want businesses to actually come and pitch to us. Mm -hmm. We want your help. So. Um, Students just apply online. Um, we have a committee that goes over the applications and um, make our selections from there. I can't give you the exact number because of confidential reasons for how many applied, but um, I today is actually the day that I'm going to be sending out emails to the accepted students. So um, I can't tell you the names now, but we have 45 students who have been accepted in the program, and we were hoping for 30. Um, and so that means that our expectations were far and above um, what we were expecting. So um, we are very happy with the turnout on, on students, and we can see already that we have some very qualified students in the program. That's good. So the next gener generation students who applied, um, check your email today. Well, Justin, thank you so much for being here today. Up next, we have Vanessa with the latest news update. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Vanessa Asmussen, and here's your good morning news for Friday. Scientists have discovered a planet similar to Earth. Kepler 78b is rare in its resemblance to our planet. It is composed of rock and iron and it orbits the sun. However, while we are 93 million miles from our sun, Kepler 78b is less than 1 million miles from its sun. This makes it extremely hot and causes one year to occur in eight and a half hours. China's top security official has announced that the deadly vehicle crash this week in Beijing's Tiananmen Square was a terrorist attack. According to CNN, Chinese officials are blaming the East Turkestan Islamic Movement for the crash, which killed five people and injured 38. Police have arrested two suspects. A school bus in rural Kansas plunged into a creek yesterday afternoon, and rescuers had to pull 10 children and the driver to safety. According to the Kansas City Star, the accident occurred after school in Douglas, a town of about 1,700 residents southeast of Wichita. All the students were eventually turned over to their parents, and the driver was taken to a hospital to be checked for hypothermia. The combination of heavy rain and a low water crossing is said to be the cause of the accident. Ford Motor Company is recalling about 3,100 F-Series ambulances because the engines can stop unexpectedly. According to the Associated Press, Ford says a faulty exhaust gas temperature sensor can cause the engines to stop and not be restarted for at least an hour. The company says it has no reports of problems affecting patient care. Dealers say that they will replace the sensor. The KU women's soccer team wraps up its regular season today against Oklahoma. By default, it's also the first playoff game for the Jayhawks. The winner of today's match will advance to the Big 12 tournament while the loser stays home. Kickoff is at 3 p.m. at Jayhawk Soccer Complex. That wraps it up for the morning news. This is Vanessa Addison. Thanks for watching.